Perfect. But even like just going to some place where your dog, like more of a dog park. When you go, there your dog's having a great time, but you're bored out of your mind. And you have nothing yeah. to drink. I, exactly. So we wanted it, and then if you go to a dog friendly, you know, bar restaurant, but they're on the leash, I mean, totally they're not having fun. Yeah. No. They're just depressed or pulling under your table, and maybe they get a little water bowl, and they're miserable 15 minutes in. Yeah. So we wanted to create a place and build on this concept, uh, and this is what we came up with. Yeah, there's a Mutt's Canine Cantina out yeah. in Dallas. Yeah, I yeah. think they're the we first dog too. bar that opened. We've done that a bit too. You're mentioning yes. the few places <laughs> we've actually. Well, they're the awesome. Bus, the tour bus. But side. same thing is, you know, they're they're massive. They're a big dog park. They right. have a bar attached to it. We we've always focused on being a sports bar that you can yeah. bring your dog right. to versus being a dog park that you can drink at. I, I will yeah. say, so we've been to Mutt's in Fort Worth and we've been to the dog bar, it seems like pretty evident that you guys have cultivated a community and yeah. like a vibe here. For sure. That yeah. is very different than, than that place. And like from when we got here, your staff specifically had mentioned like they've been talking to people about us and you know, knowing that we were gonna be here yep. and, and have a booth up. Uh, your social media uh, team was like a, a part of the process with us and so I don't know that it was just a very different experience well and not only that and tell us about this whether it be bitches running wild <laughs> or bad mother pupper pup 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 <laughs> bad mother pupper you guys are creating uh, you're creating it's a brand a brand yeah. but you're also creating popular I don't know what would you call this Instagrammable opportunities. opportunities. Yes. Yeah. T-shirt worthy. That's a whole section in my business plan. Uh, So we are at Pup's Pub in Tampa with Pub. owner there's Alex Wright, Trevor, I'm sorry, I don't Tackett. realize. Tackett? Yep. Awesome. Would you guys mind introducing yourselves, your roles, uh, and where we're currently located? Sure. Uh, so again, I'm Alex Wright. I am the co-founder. Me and my wife, Sheila Suhar, uh, founded this and partnered with our good friend here, Trevor Tackett. Uh, him and I served in the Air Force together. Um, a little bit about myself and my background, uh, born and raised in Rhode Island, uh, joined the Air Force shortly after high school. Uh, I was an aircraft mechanic for the first half, hated that, didn't travel anywhere, that's why I joined. Uh, so I was awful. <laughs> um, then uh, not looking good for aircraft mechanics lately. But I cross trained into Intel, that's where I hooked up with this guy. And uh, I got out after my six year enlistment went back to school at the University of Tampa right down the street from here uh, studied sport management went and worked for the Orlando Magic for a couple seasons a lot of fun uh, then I came back to uh, Tampa to be with my now wife Sheila uh, she dragged me back from Orlando uh, but I was happy to do it I, lo I love Tampa went back to school University of Tampa for entrepreneurship learned how to build a business from scratch and uh, after a stint at a luxury Jim Harbor Island Athletic Club. I uh, transitioned into uh, created the business plan for Pups Pub, uh, right as the entire world shut down during COVID, <laughs> <laughs> which actually kind of worked out for us. So we were looking into you know building this elaborate you know uh, dog bar. You know we had the name Pups Pub. We were really excited. We thought we could really build on this dog bar concept that was starting to become really popular uh, in the country and. When the world shut down, we're like, oh man, well, we're not getting approved for any of these insane build out loans. So we started looking at potential locations to convert. And luckily, because nobody was touching a restaurant bar space until they figured out what was gonna happen and when everything was gonna open back up, uh, Sheila and I, we took advantage. And Sheila's background in commercial real estate, she's a very successful broker here in the Tampa market. Uh, she negotiated our lease deal and they were kind of forced to take their chance on a startup <laughs> with us. Uh, luckily, right as we finished our build out here, uh, we started to slowly open up to the public right in time. So we opened uh, late December of 2020. And yeah, we're going on three plus years. We opened up a second location in downtown Orlando on July 22. 
And uh, through this process, you know, I convinced Trevor here to give me all his money from government contracting. Uh, he went that route with Intel uh, to make a bunch of money, and then uh, I duped him into investing here. That's awesome. It's a long background. So you were tricked. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't say I was tricked. Persuaded. 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 Yeah. yeah. Um, duped. That's, yeah, another, that's, yeah, a, that's a worse. Persuaded is a good word. A rough word for persuaded. persuaded. Uh, yeah, I was actually I was in Afghanistan when he called the first time. He's like, "Hey, I'm thinking about doing this idea." I'm like, "Hey, that sounds cool. Like, if you're ever serious about it, you know, let me know." And then when COVID hit, you know, furloughed from the gym, he called. And he's like, "Hey, I, I, I think I'm serious. I, I want to do it." I'm like, "Hey, let me, send me what you got. Send me your business plan. We'll look over it." Mm. So he sent me a 68-page business plan. <laughs> <laughs> it was 57 that, pages. That's 57. A education. Right? 57. Yeah. It was the See, longest. I had no business. college education. My business plan was one page. <laughs> and I got it all done. So a ton of information. Uh, we were working on planes at the time, so I had two old pilots normally in the front, one kid in the back. So I would bring, printed it out, sit on the plane with uh, my old retired pilots, and I, any question, like, hey, what about this? Does this make sense? and combed through it for about a week. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he was able to answer every question that the pilots came up with. Nice. And then, so I'm like, hey, let's do it. And so hopefully those awesome. pilots knew what they were asking. They, one of them did. The other one didn't <laughs> He was pretty good. Paul. Hey, the bank was cool with it. I mean, it, we came back with no notes. And wow. for a startup, uh, the guy that you know was our contact with the bank he goes, I've been doing this for like 10 years. I've never seen that. For a startup. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, for a franchise that's different, it's right. like, yeah, sure. cool, yeah. open up your Publix. Like, clearly yeah. that's going to be successful. But, you know, for us, he's like, that's well done. So, um, you know, using that knowledge is going to be incredibly important, you know, as we venture into our franchising yeah. uh, And I want to talk about that in a minute, but, but mm -hmm. let me also clarify this. So you guys opened a restaurant. Mm -hmm. in a bar. Oh, oh, bar. Excuse me, a yeah. bar. Thank you for clarifying. A bar and a dog focused bar oh yeah dog <coughs> bar you guys opened that in 2020 oh yeah in december, december 2020. 2020 i got a bunch of psychos so, <laughs> yeah was there like anyone else in this space doing this that you guys were modeling after yeah so i'd love to give credit to uh the dog bar they're located okay. in saint pete their yeah. first location was actually uh in charlotte so oh. we knew that they existed obviously being you know uh, about 40 minutes away so we had been there before. We're like, wow, this is such a cool idea, such a cool concept. But I felt like there was a lot left on the table. You know, it was more of here's a cool dog park and here's a tiny bar that you can also go to. You know, I felt like if we could make it more cool sports bar, full liquor, even if you don't have a dog, you just like dogs, mm -hmm. you know, you can come and hang out and still have a good time versus going to, I don't know if you've ever been to a dog park or... No, I was, was, was going to bring it up yeah. when the we day prior, we were at yeah. dog bar. Perfect. But even like just going to some place where your dog, like more of a dog park. When you go, there your dog's having a great time, but you're bored out of your mind. And you have nothing yeah. to drink. I, exactly. So we wanted it. And then if you go to a dog friendly, you know, bar restaurant, but they're on the leash, I mean, totally. they're not having fun. Yeah. They're just depressed or pulling under your table. And maybe they get a little water bowl and they're miserable 15 minutes in. So we wanted to create a place and build on this concept, uh, and this is what we came up with. Yeah, there's a Mutt's Canine Cantina out yeah. in Dallas. Yeah, I yeah. think they're the we first dog too. bar that opened. We've done that a bit too. You're mentioning yeah. the <coughs> few places we <laughs> actually. Well, have they're the awesome. Bus, the tour bus. But yeah. same thing is, you know, they're they're massive. They're a big dog park. They right. have a bar attached to it. We we've always focused on being a sports bar that you could yeah. bring your dog right. to versus being a dog park that you could drink at. I, right. I will yeah. say, so we've been to Mutt's <coughs> in Fort Worth and we've been to the dog bar, it seems like pretty evident that you guys have cultivated a community and yeah. like a vibe here. For sure. It's yeah. very different than, than that place. And like from when we got here, your staff specifically had mentioned like they've been talking to people about us and you know, knowing that we were gonna be here yep. and have a booth up. Uh, your social media uh, team was like a, a part of the process with us and so I don't know it was just a very different experience well and not only that and tell us about this whether it be bitches running wild <laughs> or bad mother pupper puppeteers bad mother yeah. pupper you guys are creating uh, y'all are creating it's a brand a brand yeah. but you're also creating popular I don't know what would you call this uh Instagrammable, Instagrammable opportunities. opportunities. Yes. Yeah. T-shirt worthy. That's a whole section in my worthy. business plan. Uh, <laughs> Cup worthy. So these are all pages. these are all goofy ideas that you know we were conjuring you know throughout this process. You know, like I wanted to have a signature cup. Yeah. 
you know, we know that we needed everything to be plastic because you can't have a glass shatter right. with dogs around. They're going to step on it and get hurt. So we're going through like these, you know, fake glass, but plastic, you don't want it to look good. Yeah. Um, but we needed something to put our draft beer in. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is a golden opportunity to have something unique to us. And I feel like I came up with too good of an idea because everybody steals them. I was going to so, say, I saw yeah. your rules. These are for sale. They are not yes. for free. Yeah, they're not for free. Um, but at the end of the day, it's someone. still good marketing. Yeah. Um, oh, it, probably more than once a night. What do you... Oh, that's you a catch. Side track. What do you, so you catch somebody once a night <coughs> trying to literally like stick this thing like in yeah. their purse well, they don't, or something? Well, they don't even do no, that. Just they might just like me. walk out with they it. just leave it. We just say, hey, I can grab that for you. And they're like, oh. Right, yeah. I immediately noticed. I was like, oh, this is not a regular solo. Cover. Right. Yeah. I'm taking this home. <laughs> we're, actually, <laughs> we're actually looking into uh, creating this into a dog squeak toy so that oh, they can have their puzz really pub good. cup too. That's, that's really, really yeah. good. Brilliant. So you guys, that's the uniqueness. Back to your point. Yeah. that you, you guys are creating... And I wanted to unify that with uh, a lot of different aspects of the business. So like on our drink menu, we have a Bitches Running Wild, we have a Bad Mother Pupper, we have the Here to Chase Tail. Mm -hmm. um, you know, building on what's fun, like this being, obviously we're here in Tampa, big lightning following. So what are we going to do to support the lightning? Well, we started handing out shots every time that they scored a goal in the playoffs. We've been very fortunate. The lightning have been awesome since we opened. <laughs> so... You know, the, uh, when they beat the Islanders 8-0, that was a lot of shots. I had, I've never seen people turn down so many uh, free was, shots. Was that, your, was that the team you were rooting for? Yeah. So local Tampa Bay Lightning. <laughs> local Lightning. But so we no, started. No, no, no. You mentioned, you, you mentioned Rhode Island. Oh, no. Well, the Islanders the, is uh, New York. New York Islanders. Um, okay, Rhode Island's too small to actually have a team. Look, it's <laughs> cool. Rhode Island doesn't even have a team. I was even an ice hockey player. <laughs> and I, I'm a total idiot. That tells you how little I follow no sports Fair. because I totally got that wrong. I knew there were the Islanders. I missed that. I'm sorry. You're good. You're good. Um, but no, like we wanted to create a tradition with that, and we did. Then we had the logo. Uh, so we call them lightning shots. Everyone's chanting during the regular season. Every time they win, we give out free shots to everybody. And then during the playoffs, we kept that up. Every time they score a goal, we give out a free shot. So it's a lot of fun. We've had the Stanley Cup here. Um, the equipment oh, manager wow. is the a actual member. Stanley Cup. The it's actual the Stanley, Stanley Cup. Cup. I've drank out of it. How did you get that? Whoa. How did you do that? Uh, our, the equipment manager, he's, uh, he's a member. Or his dog's a member. Yeah. One of the regulars are good friends with him, and so they got but it That added. is so cool. That's where I was. Okay. So that's <laughs> <laughs> Not here. Not so here. That's, so, so that's here in Tampa. Do you have a similar? You've got another location in Orlando? Yeah. So in Tampa for the sports, he's wearing our Puppineers. That's probably our most popular. Uh, we have our lightning shots. The most popular part of that is the actual taking of free shots. <laughs> um, and then we have the dog rays of summer. So that was a goofy little play on, you know, supporting the baseball. And then in Orlando, we have Pup Magic. It's like a picture of uh, this guy, the black one, dunking, kind of looking like nice. Shaq. And then uh, we have just the Orlando City logo, but instead of a lion head, it's a dog head. So I feel like it's going to be really fun as we hope to open more Puss Pubs that they can have still some unique uh, ownership of each location, maybe having their dog as those yeah. logos. And yeah. maybe even get these t-shirts and that sort of thing Everything. for the local. Yeah, yeah so like, say like Nashville, Just, they have the Predators do yeah. like a, a Nashville Predators with whoever opens their, yeah. their dog. So they're able to take, you know, creative ownership yeah, of their right. products. So you've got, create, you've got the creative, creativity in both uh, the bar ownership, you got dog love, you got dogs, mm -hmm. but then you're also tying the love of sports into it. 100%, yep. yeah. And then we do really focus on community. So. Uh, we partnered with all of the local dog businesses, so like Paws and Rec with Doggy Daycare, uh, Revolution Dog Training. You know that's super important for us because one of the requirements of bringing a dog here to Pub's Pub is they have to be well behaved, mm -hmm. and if they're not, you know we ask them to leave. Right. So we want to provide solutions. You know maybe they adopted them, maybe they've had a really you know the dog had a rough uh, upbringing. Yeah. You know shout out to like a Miss Peaches, um, <laughs> but. You know, we don't want to just say, hey, get out of here. You know, you're ruining for everybody and embarrass them. Like, hey, we're about providing solutions. Bring them over to Revolution or another dog trainer. Come back with a certificate of training, and we're happy to reinstate your membership. Um, beyond that, you know, we've done a lot of dog adoption events. I actually got Bonnie here uh, at our first St. Puppies Day event. You know, that's been a big hit for us. And then also leaning into our community events. You know, have you heard of Gasparilla? Where everybody dresses up like pirates here in Tampa. Mm -hmm. 
Google I have it. Not heard of it it's unbelievable. Gasparilla. Gasparilla. Yeah. So it's this ridiculous <clears throat> pirate tradition where they shut down Bayshore. It's a whole parade. Everyone dresses up like mm-hmm. pirates. The whole city shuts down. Whole city shuts down. <laughs> it's crazy. Like open container laws for the day. It's wild. <laughs> um, but so we do a Gasparilla the Saturday before, going the same day as the children's parade, which happens in Ebor. So. You know, the people who don't have kids, they typically have a dog, spoil them, and they get to come here and have a blast. So we're open on Gasparilla. We do our Gasparilla the week before, costume contests, all that stuff. So creating those traditions at, you know, in each market is probably the thing that, you know, I have the most fun with. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really cool. And that's that's what's going to get you success in your franchise. Oh, Oh, for sure. And so you guys just, you just got your FDD. Just right. finished it last week. Yep. Last nice. Week. Last week. <laughs> finally so done after months of just grinding. So, so you got. You think my business plan was long? Oh my <laughs> god. Got two oh, locations yeah. corporately. Now you're ready to take over the country. Yep. Tell That's us the plan. Your, tell us about your franchising plans. So we partnered with a company called Franchise Well. They're franchise consultants. Uh, they've been successfully doing this for 20 plus years. Uh, the founder Ben, uh, you know, he is very selective in who he partners with. He only partners with one or two companies a year. And I was able to persuade and dupe him as well. So really excited uh, that he uh, took a liking to us. And you know, he's helped us with connecting us with the training portion of it. You know, we're creating a Pups Pub Obedience School. Mm-hmm. So that's gonna have all your training in one location yeah. online, you know, digital training, but also a, a place where you can store your documents, all of your, your legal stuff, your licensing, all that all in one central location. Um, so that's for your what? franchisees to learn. Correct. And yep. you're calling it obedience. School. Yep. Post pub obedience school. Love that. that will make a lot more sense when you have a handful yeah. of franchisees. Oh yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> what platform are you hosting that on? Uh, have you ever heard of Lightspeed? Yeah, it's on uh, okay. that platform. Gotcha. Yeah, but what was cool is like I've never heard of Lightspeed, mm-hmm. but through Ben and his contacts and what he's been able to build this winning formula for other franchises, um, you know, for us to follow suit is you know really exciting. What are, What are some other brands that he's worked with? Uh, Daddy's Chicken Shack is one of his most recent, and Dill Dinker is Pickleball. And, uh, oh, the pickleball. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the restaurant where they've tied pickleball in. Like, it's so not that finish. one. That's just more like the course, the one that he's done. There's been there's quite a few pickleball franchises that have just uh, been introduced to the markets. But, I mean, his is, they've already sold, I think, almost 100. Wow. It's funny, funny you mention it's pickleball. Crazy. I've never played, but I will be making my debut on Friday. All right. Against my business partner. <laughs> that will be, what, episode four or five <laughs> of our of our. Yeah docu-series where I nice. get to show my business partner who has actually taken lessons on pickleball how to actually play pickleball. That's going to be fun. We okay. can do a secret lesson, I'm just saying. Well, we get beat by the old ladies at the Y, but, you know. Oh, you do? <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, they're amazing. Good, they my, play every day. If the old ladies are beating y'all, my business partner has a chance to beat me. <laughs> <laughs> y'all might meet him here in a little bit. Nice, nice. Yeah, he should be here soon. But they also did, uh, have you heard of Porta Subs? No. Correct. And what, what's really big for good. partnering with Franchise Well, too, is their network. I mean, you know, Ben's worked with the founder of Remax on deals, you know, helping franchise that. Uh, so being able to get our FDD and our e-brochure in front of those types of people. Yep. I mean, I didn't even know what a franchise broker was until a few months ago, but people buy a whole territory of franchises. Right. And, you know, getting this in front of those uh, successful business people is really exciting. So that was actually going to be one of my questions. You mentioned the brokers. You just learned about oh, is yeah. that. Is that a direction you guys are headed as far as... Um uh, trying to work with brokers. Our initial strategy is to be more white glove hands on okay. for making sure that the first 10 to 20 are super successful. Not to say that we're opposed right. to a selling a territory to the right person, mm-hmm. um, but we really we understand the importance of initial success. Yeah. We need to build the value of the brand and that also we want to support our first our pack leaders for the right. first 10 to 20 franchisees to make sure that they're successful and they're doing well and they, uh, this, their investment pays off. Yep. But also, you know, from our perspective as the franchisors, we want to make sure that we're building that value in the Puzz Pub brand mm-hmm. and also refining our skills to support them throughout yeah. those processes. Yeah, that's really smart. That's yeah. really smart. Yeah, the brokers, they'll, if you can get in with them, 
and you're a favorite of the brokers and I, and we have not historically we grew without brokers but I, mm. I i i think there's an awesome strategy to using brokers that's how you really get that that very fast scale for sure but you're doing it the right way by getting that a stop get really like you say white gloving really taking your time to to train and to spend time with the yeah. initial franchisees to ensure that the more success. you know you're, you're going to be able to manage it as it's going yep. i say we got a lot to learn as we move forward with them too yeah. so you know to jump to 20 at one time versus doing right five us learning, them learning, and then ironing out that process, yeah. then, you know, hit them brokers, get. And it would be great to sell 25 tomorrow, right? But if they're all trying to open up at about the same time, we'll be spread too thin, we're not gonna know what we're doing, and we don't wanna sell them short. Yeah. Yeah. So we intend on flying out to each location, helping them hire, train, with the launch. You know, we had a very successful launch uh, here in Tampa and even more so in Orlando. You know, Tampa was a little bit of a challenge with COVID, yeah. you know, doing those pre-sales. But in Orlando, once we didn't have that issue, uh, we sold 406 memberships before we opened wow. and we hit over a thousand members in three months. Wow. That's incredible. Wow. So yeah. how much so is talk, Yeah, I was going to say, talk to us about the <clears throat> membership model and how that works. So we find that it's a, a great business model uh, from various reasons, but really for the customer, is if you know that someone, it, and it's the dogs, it's the, the member, the VIP, very important pup. So let's say you guys share a dog and you come in with your dog one day and then you come in with another day. It's the dog that has the membership and you get to benefit for the memberships or the uh, benefits of that membership. Okay. And why that's so important is every dog that comes in, they have to meet those requirements. They have to be up to date on the rabies and parvo vaccinations. They have to be fixed if over a year old, so they're not aggressive and territorial and most importantly, friendly, off the leash with other people and pups. Yeah. So when you come in here, unlike a dog park where it's a free for all, it's enter at your own risk, here you know that the other dogs here meet those requirements and if they don't, they'll be asked to be removed. Okay. And with those membership, uh, you get those benefits like I mentioned. So for the people, you get to benefit with discounts at the bar. Every Monday is member Mondays, 50% off the bar. Rest of the week is 10% off. We just uh, started first Fridays, Pub's Pub After Dark. Uh, <laughs> from so we stay open, oh, we stay man. open an extra two hours from 11 to 1 a.m. or even 3 a.m. Yeah, we were <laughs> but it was 50% <laughs> off, uh, you know, after that. So we were always trying to add more value to your membership, mm. and that also includes all of our partners. They give discounts to our members. You know they. Uh, get to receive some Puzz Pub uh, discounts if they send them our way. So we're always looking to, you know, add value to those memberships. So, so sorry, Dave. <laughs> How much does a membership cost? So we offer monthly and annual. A monthly is thirty dollars a month. You can cancel any time, um, and then we do offer some discounts. Any of our partners that come over, that's twenty percent off, or if a veteran, that's twenty five percent off. And then we offer the best value, which is our annual membership. That's two ninety nine, which is like getting two months free. Wow. And then if you have a second dog on top of that, up to three dogs on one membership, the other dogs are half off. Okay, so let's say, so let's say you have two dogs. The first one's going to be thirty. The second one's going to be fifteen, forty-five total for the month. Got it. What's Got the it. ratio of annual versus monthly memberships? It's about a third here in uh, Tampa and about a quarter in Orlando. Of annual being the third. Annual being the third. Yeah. But from a from a standpoint, from a business model standpoint. We talked about what? How many pages? 60, uh, 60, 60. It was fifty-seven. It was fifty-seven. I'm pretty sure it was from 68. a business model standpoint. <laughs> it's not sixty-eight. What? What bar or or, or what? What other possible possible opportunity in this space that's not dog related? I'm talking about. It, 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 they, could you actually go and have memberships for? Mm -hmm. That has got enormous value. The cool. ongoing, recurring. Yeah membership that's something the that the, we were talking about the bars over on the other soho or whatever mm -hmm. the, or, they, they don't have that opportunity yeah. but because you're able to bring the dogs in yeah so what about food so we do not serve food uh we are a full liquor bar um now we offer food trucks you know they come during our busier times and then you can uber eats you can bring food from in uh just because when we have dogs inside yeah. uh we can't legally uh prepare and serve food okay. now with that said, every state is different and every building structure design and permitting is different. So what we've learned throughout this last few years is, you know, if we're in more of like a outdoor shell of a building, 
then we could do whatever we want as far as food. If we wanted to do our own kitchen, if we wanted to have a food truck that was permanently there, we would have those options. And then state by state, if they did want to pursue food, you know, we'd happy to offer them our gourmet hot dog menu that we developed. <laughs> uh, so there is an so option good. there, but uh, no, that's it, something that's... That was a great COVID night. Of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they say a great COVID yeah, night. Yeah, we, we, cause just at the drinking time, and coming up with ideas. I mean, yeah. a sushi hot Well, dog. no, with COVID... Still stand by to, it, it was good. You had sushi to be a dog. restaurant to open, so we spent a night and we just made gourmet hot dog. Well, I made, he ate yeah. gourmet hot dogs. I came dogs. up with ideas. I contributed. <laughs> There's nothing to go do, so we're just spending the night making hot yeah. dogs. So hold on, what is a sushi hot dog exactly? All right, so it's a regular, no, it's a fancy hot dog. I don't know, it was like a legit hot dog, and then cream cheese and avocado, and then we put like spicy mayo on it. <laughs> it was pretty if good. If you add a little bit of artificial crab in there, it's <laughs> a California roll. Oh, there you go. California roll. California yeah, dog. Yeah. Hot dog meat on top. That was good. That's I liked it. I'm curious. So you guys, and that's the, that's the thing that I saw that was unique. After going to a few different, uh, different dog bars or dog restaurants, when I walked in here, I was surprised by yeah, you've just got dogs walking yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. You didn't have any you didn't have any aggression. Uh, one of the other ones we went to, like every 10, 15, 20 minutes you heard kind of wow. a little scuffle, you know, scuffle. You mm. don't have that here. And so it has it was very unique even even for me coming to yeah. going and kind of doing different uh, I think one of the big things that helps that is uh, back to like staffing and who we have. We have the pup patrollers whose job is, you know, they're making sure everything's clean, sanitary. They're checking in people, selling memberships, but you know, they're watching the dogs. Mm -hmm. So if you're watching your game, you're still, you know, paying attention to your dog, but you're also watching the game where most places like Yoda dog park, you're just staring at your dog yeah. where they're walking around and they're, they're well trained, you know, they're very well, or they know how to work with dogs. So they see the signs of, Hey, these two dogs, mm -hmm. they're playing, but it's getting a little much. Let's separate them for a couple minutes, let them calm down, and then they're going to okay. go back to playing. So they're watching for those signs of aggressions to stop it before it happens. So they're watching that, and, I, and again, I don't know if the cameras can't see it, but you've got artificial turf throughout mm -hmm. your entire yep. uh, establishment. Inside and out. Do you, how do you, you, obviously you're using something to clean with on some sort of regular basis, accidents, yeah. that sort of thing? It is a very long, detailed process oh, for okay. sure, yeah. uh, <clears throat> but the quick and dirty, is we use what we call the turf Zamboni every night. So it's like a carpet cleaner kind <laughs> okay. of deal. And we have drainage underneath the floors. Uh, so, you know, when we uh, hit it with a hose and flush it out, Orlando, we actually built a one of a kind flushing system. Okay. So we, you know, we flush that, you know, twice a day. And, uh, you know, like Trevor was saying, we have our pup patrollers that are monitoring it. You know, you are responsible for your dog, just like a dog park. So if they do go number two, we have way stations inside and out. You know, we're taking them out every so often to make sure that nothing ever stinks. Um, but if they miss something or maybe something's a little too dirty, we need to hit the hose. You know, they're there to, to help that out. Was the flushing system uh, something you designed? I mean, I didn't design it. <laughs> Our general contractor did in Orlando. Okay. Uh, came with a pretty brilliant idea. You know, we have the rights to that. So, so um, is it patented? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, truly, you guys do a fantastic job that's something i've noticed you, you've yes. got the dogs running around here in the evenings and you have an yep. awesome uh, community of people and animals but then it's clean well it's that was really the big clean. concern you know going forward fun fact alex never had a sense of smell so Born he doesn't it. know if something smells bad so me and sheila if it starts to smell bad people aren't going to come right. i wouldn't want to come so we went through a lot of trial and error finding the right cleaning process the right mm -hmm. cleaning techniques because it wasn't even it like that we weren't cleaning you know it was it still has that piss like Dogs. aroma yeah. Yeah. and you know whether it be and I'll let him speak to it because again I can't smell but we have done a lot to combat that and you know I'd like to think and yeah. what are the responses that we've gotten is that we have it well, is really with clean. like the carpet cleaner we found a lot of the issue was like it'll look clean it'll look everything but if you hit it with a vacuum like you're just it's hair like all this matted yeah. down hair is yeah. in there that if unless you get that out that's what's yeah. holding in the smell so the carpet cleaner at night, vacuum it all up in the morning, you know, get all so that out there. this is a daily part of y'all's yeah, Every day. Yeah, yeah, it has to be every day. Yep. Wow. Makes sense. It's about a, the Zamboni takes about <laughs> 20 minutes, depending on, but uh, yeah, every night. Because yeah, if you fun. don't, it'll, you know, it, that. It'll uh, accumulate and, you know, obviously that's that's not fun. No, right. Absolutely. No, I would think so. That's why. That's and why then why especially I I asked, with like I Orlando, so Orlando's more inside, which would work great for like, say, Colorado or Salt Lake where it's. Mm. 
But with it being inside, you don't have the airflow that Tampa has. So right. having that process that you can still make sure that inside mm -hmm. doesn't start smelling was super important for Orlando. Yeah. So speaking of location and picking out your location. Yep. This, I remember you, you mentioned, was an old house. Built in 1919. Wow, so wow. over 100 years old. <laughs> yeah. It's and now converted. It's super fun to maintain. <laughs> <laughs> you got super the, fun. You got your world headquarters upstairs. Oh is yeah. That my understanding. She lives up there right now. We call her the uh, the Wizard of Oz. Wizard of Oz. <laughs> How often does she make it make her way down and, and you know socialize herself? Like actually come down and have like fun. Come down and have fun. <laughs> Take I mean, some free shots. I haven't let her come have fun in like at least <laughs> 10 weeks. At least 10 weeks. October 08. <laughs> you, you, but you I think she, she came out for my birthday a, uh, a few well, weeks ago. Yeah, she's the SCE is done now, so she can yeah. come out. <laughs> no, no, no. She, she was also transitioning out of commercial real estate. So she still has some of her uh, clients there. But as we transition, I mean, it has just been a nonstop every single day. And, you know, I, I always just naturally feel bad because she's working so hard and like this is work right now for me and this is fun this doesn't feel yeah. like work um but we understand that you know we're good at what we're good at you know we would never trust me with the accounting so <laughs> that's why she's doing that but no she does come down everybody lo absolutely loves sheila awesome. you know she's super excited for our upcoming event the pup prom uh this saturday so she'll be there. Uh, so tell, yeah, tell us about Pup Prom. Pup Prom. So this is our second Pup Prom, where we will crown a Pup uh, Prom court, and then a king and queen from there. Uh, you know, we got some fun prizes. We always do fundraisers. Um, you know, so that's going to be like a dress up. We're going to have prizes for best dress. Uh, we're going to take the pictures, hang them up in the bar, and turn it into like an annual tradition. So it'll be a lot of fun. There'll be like a backdrop where you get to take, you know, goofy prom pictures uh, with your dog and um, or people or two dogs. Like we've done like pup prom pro promposals. Uh, <laughs> that's become a thing. So we've been having some of those goofy videos leading up to the event. So it's just something goofy we like to have fun um we've done a worst in show instead of a best in show <laughs> where you know we give points for like uh, talent you know and they don't do it right and right. then it's like oh well that's points for worst in show that's where my dogs would yeah win. <laughs> my well then dogs would win for so our partners were awesome least <laughs> well then you should have uh, participated right. because the won. winner of worst in show actually got complimentary dog training and then best in Good show got complimentary <laughs> dog grooming so nice. it was something really fun to do um you know beyond that we're just always hosting goofy events it, it's just we're gonna do no, awesome. like a papa palooza music fest and, and then of course we have our dog birthday parties which is more of a weekly uh tradition yeah this friday we have a barbie and ken Party. Party. <laughs> I think awesome. I might want to move to Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> I know, this, sounds so much, yeah. this sounds like so much fun. Maybe you could just buy a franchise in Dallas. Uh, I was waiting to get to that part. You so <laughs> when are you coming to Dallas? <laughs> whenever uh, whenever you want to buy one, I mean. Available. Let's go. Uh, no, we're we're looking into Texas uh, for market. I think that's going to be amazing. Obviously, Dallas. I think Austin. It would be absolutely yeah, perfect Austin for our concept. We think that this would work really well in Tennessee. We have a couple of prospects in Nashville and Chattanooga. And then we're looking into Georgia, the Carolinas. Uh, there's a lot of, believe it or not, Florida is actually one of the harder states to open one because of the liquor license cost. Really? You know, the liquor yeah. license here was 125 and that was during COVID. And our one hundred and twenty-five dollars. Thousand. <laughs> I, knew, I knew the answer. Yeah. I just wanted to have some fun there. Yeah, that one. Hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Just wait. To get just a liquor all right. Before you have just that wait. reaction, <laughs> guess how much we had to pay for the Orlando one. I can't even imagine because I'm just, my jaw. That's still adorable. I wish <laughs> that was the down payment. It was <laughs> six sixty-five. You had to what? pay six hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars to get the we license financed the to, majority sell of it. Lick, to sell liquor yes. yeah. in Orlando. Correct. I, people <laughs> love their no state taxes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, well, I love that too. But you don't have, <laughs> I don't think the Texas is set up. That so way. when it's, 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 not, it's not, it's not. Texas is way easier. They they do it the right way. You have your annual fee, and that's it. Well, well, well I can't imagine that. That that's a, it costs six. Figures. You have to be rich just to yes. open a business. Yes. Yeah. Yes, you do. Sells liquor. Yeah. That's crazy. That's insane. It's just I love your dogs. Oh, okay. Is that our? Oh. 
Welcome this here. Is, this, is, <laughs> this is the real Pet Waste Millionaire coming what in right here. This guy right How's here. How's it going? Sorry, he's just, uh, he's too shy <laughs> to be on camera. Oh, okay. Uh, actually, I just needed Bon Bon. <laughs> this is, Did you get one? This is Bonnie. Bonnie, what's going She's on? She's our head of security. <laughs> <laughs> she does a good job. So you, you got us, you interrupted us in the middle oh, so of our Pet Waste Millionaire podcast. Good, oh, yeah. At least show your face But did Josh, you, no, I, you, you came in at an interesting time. Right at the head time. of the table. I had no idea. In the state of Florida, it cost $125,000 to be able to say, I can sell you liquor That's at this on the location. That's on the low end. On the low end. Orlando was 660 Six sixty five. Six hundred and sixty dollars. Yeah. Just to get your yeah. liquor license. Now wow. it went just to put in context, when we first started looking into it like so we have a liquor license broker because you need one in Florida. And he's like, Hey, just wanna give you a heads up, I know you're interested in Orlando. They are skyrocketing in price. So when we first were looking at it, they were like three to three fifty, which is still high but you know, feasible in our plans. And he's like, Hey man, like it's starting to go up. I was like, Yeah, sure you are. This is just a sales tactic. Nope. It wasn't. <laughs> it went up to five plus. Wow. And we're like, oh my God. It's so like, he called us and we were months out from when we actually wanted to buy this. And he goes, hey, because we have a good relationship and I know you guys are going to end up opening more, hopefully, you have 30 minutes. <laughs> this is the last one in the county. Wow. It's yours for 665, but I need a signature in 30 minutes. So me and Sheila are like, oh crap. Because obviously, without a liquor license, you can't open. Right. Yeah. So we're doing our research. We're making sure what he's telling us is accurate. It was. And we just had to take out a pretty crazy shark loan just to cover it in advance of our SBA loan getting uh, you know, completed. So that was pretty crazy. But we were so far down the line at that point where we didn't have a choice. And in retrospect, we made the right decision because when we opened, there was nothing available. Zero. Yeah. And so, if the liquor license continues to go up, which it sounds like they just do, our Orlando one's worth hold, like seven something. Now. Okay, so yeah. it holds value. Can you, when you sell it? Sell. You yeah, can, but asset. then you can't sell yeah. booze. Yeah. So what am well, I going to do? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. But, but like, it's an asset. But if, yeah, it's, it's literally an asset. An asset. If you sell yeah. it to it, the yes. next. Because so we could sell they, this one for three hundred. We more than only doubled our money. They offer so many of them, I yep. guess, and that's why they cost so much. So they do this thing called the lottery. And the guy who owns our liquor license actually won the lottery, so he paid fifteen thousand for it, and he sold it to us for six sixty-five. Yeah, so he's making a killing. I've never heard of such. It's, it's wild. Just, Texas is not set up. It is not. No, I mean. You pay your annual fee, and that's it. Wow. It's, it's almost corrupt. It's exact same. It yeah, is. It it's super exact. corrupt. People hang on to them for decades. I have never it works heard like of a such. like a old New York taxi medallion if you're. Yeah, yeah. Or the hot dog, or the hot dog like, vendors. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's like organized crime almost. It's <laughs> only legalized organized yeah. crime. We gotta figure out how to get some of these liquor licenses. <laughs> <laughs> well, people do. So you can well, apply for liquor licenses every year, and we do. Yeah. We're praying for that lottery. Right. But and you'll until sell then, what you have and just pay the fifteen thousand or whatever. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So wow. is it in buckets? So like, if you're wanting to put a bid in, is it just out of one big bucket? That they're drawing yeah. Oh yeah, it's so you, uh, tens of thousands of people that apply. You apply year. by yeah. county, and then I mean the whole state applies because it's yeah. literally you, it's, it's a, a hun- it's hundred dollars to I, apply. I, I, I the so they're making money it, off the application. Or oh, liquor license broker, some sort? he's like straight out of a mafia movie. <laughs> <laughs> like he's in this like dark, yeah. you know, office. And he's got like Godfather posters. Don't see me. <laughs> I'm serious. Don't see me about your liquor I've lunch. never had someone swear at me more on the phone. I think that's why him and I get along so well. <laughs> he's always cussing me out, and then I'm cussing him out, and I'm like, I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> that's awesome. I had no wow. idea. I had no idea. That's wild. I knew it was hard to get a liquor license. I, I've heard of that. Yeah. But, wow. It's expensive more than anything. Well, so other states, Texas, well, that, Carolinas, Georgia. Tennessee, it's not like that. It, you know, so the barrier to entry for a franchisee is right. significantly it's different. different. Yeah. Congratulations, yeah, different. you guys have officially spent more on liquor. Than <laughs> I, have. I don't think that was possible. <laughs> I, 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 I need to see receipts. I need to see receipts. I don't I'm know how long say, you've been drinking. I'm not convinced that you guys have spent more than that. No. But uh, no, Josh, uh, they they just got done with their FDD, so okay, they've got cool. two yeah, corporate locations yeah. getting ready to franchise. You guys, and are, Tennessee is next, right? That's the, that's the plan. That's the plan. You're going to open Nashville and Chattanooga. So that'll be a franchisee, you're thinking. Correct. Yes. So that's, that's out the door, I'm interested so. in Dallas. I want to open something up in Dallas. He wants to open something up in Dallas. I have enough going on. But out the door, I mean, are you talking 
half a million? What, 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 what's your startup cost in your item seven? So we have two options. You can go the conversion route, which is much like this Tampa location where we found an existing space mm -hmm. that would work for our model. And then we just renovated it mm -hmm. to, you know, obviously the turf, the drainage, you know, our signage, our colors, all that stuff. Um, so if you can get lucky enough to find a bar, restaurant type space with a good patio, you could potentially convert that depending on your government or your uh, general your contractor with, I don't know, 250 to 550, okay. depending on how crazy you want to get. Or you can do more of a build from scratch. And that's more of like what we did in Orlando. That one's going to be probably your half a million to like 750. So this one is more of that first option right. you mentioned. Where you know, you're are you guys targeting, like, th this is just a cool vibe. It's, a, it's an old house, right? Yeah. So, like, it, are those are the type of locations you guys are looking for? Or if somebody wanted, like, you know, a steel building, would you steer away from that because it just doesn't have the same vibe? The cool thing about Puss Pub is it doesn't matter what the bones of the building is. As long as you have you know, our vibe, because we're going to create that and uh, d uh, deliver it to any location. But they just need to have some indoor outdoor space. Yeah. And it's going to be different from every market. You know, as we start to enter more of those colder climates, you know, we're going to want more covered space, more climate control on the heat side. I mean, we turn our heaters on here in Tampa on like four times a year, yeah. which three of those times are ridiculous. <laughs> um, but if we ever go into even a Nashville, Tennessee, like they're going to have, they get snow, like yeah. it's going to be colder sometimes. Not to say that people aren't still going to come out with their dogs, but we need to be able to control that climate. So you mentioned like the the vibe is obviously a huge aspect of the brand. For sure. Are you worried that as you begin to scale and get more uh, uh, locations opened up, that the vibe that you guys have created will start to diminish as you bring in more people? Not at all. Or I think it's quite the opposite. Very specific people. Because we are going to be. We are very selective in who we're going to be partnering with for these franchises, especially in these beginning stages, but. We've created a game plan with events every single month. We have traditions, we have brand recognition, we have drink menus, you know, this is all laid out, ready to go. We've already created and proven the vibe, right? That's actually a big part of our obedience school is abiding by said vibe. Josh. And they call the franchise yeah. training. <laughs> training <laughs> is obedience yeah. school. Yeah, we thought we were mm -hmm. slick with our boot camp. But, uh, I, mean, I mean, that's that's fire. That's fire. <laughs> obedience. School. But no, like, school. and then we're gonna have you know oversee all of this. I mean, as you asked me, like, what's my title? What am I gonna be doing? Really, it's going to be quality control. I'm gonna be making sure that every pus pub that opens meets our requirements. They're doing what we're you know have created, mm -hmm. and they're keeping that vibe and it's going to be different in each market our orlando location is different from our tampa location because tampa people are a little bit different than orlando yeah, people yeah. you know we are a little more hardcore on sports here and then in orlando you know they're they love disney they love, disney, they love it so much <laughs> disney adults is a real thing and that's okay we lean into that yeah cool. so what is the i know it's different for every market but what are the key elements of what you're looking for in a franchisee so franchisee, you know, we obviously want to cater towards our uh, fellow veterans. You know, they have that uh, experience and knowledge that we're confident in running a business successfully. But really, this is a passion play. You know, we want owner operators. Not to say that we're not opposed to that franchise broker, the investor. but they need to make sure that whoever's running this place is able to, you know, give that vibe, be able to create it and sustain it and that's a you know a like-minded person like us so that's very similar you mentioned i think off camera before we got started the chick-fil-a you, you admire the chick-fil-a model in that of course you have to build up to that you can't start off from year one and have twenty thousand applicants yeah. for 100 right. locations yeah. Uh, but yeah that chick-fil-a model they can't own more than two or three stores and almost no franchisee in the chick-fil-a model owns more than one one location mm -hmm. because they want that owner operated mm -hmm. culture absolutely they don't want them spread too thin i i, I running two bars even just you know an hour and a half apart you know two hours with i4 traffic um it's challenging at times you know not being able to be there at a moment's notice and not be hands-on with everything that we do so that owner operator is extremely important in our early stages so that's actually a good question what does your day-to-day -day look like what does your day-to-day -day look like i'll ask but we'll start well we like to consider ourselves firefighters um, <laughs> we are always putting out fires but 
you know, my day to day is more or it's transitioning into more of a macro uh, overseeing, you know, our sales and marketing uh, initiatives. Uh, of course, our staffing, you know, doing a lot of uh, just planning and following up and making sure that everything's running smoothly. Whereas, you know, I'll let him go, but more of a day to day operations at the moment. So you're at your day to day operations, but more on the sales and bringing the events and that sort of thing in. For sure. And then Trevor. Yeah, so last, what, month now? Transitioned from mm -hmm. the contracting lifestyle to actually working here, uh, you know, running the day to day of the bar as far as, um, you know, opening, closing. I lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but make sure everything's working right as everyone's you, here. You right? open and close every day. Not every day. You and your team. So, uh, uh, we're gonna have a new manager coming in. We just had one leave. She got a great job offer. She had to take it. Nice. So uh, he'll be filling in a couple of days while we work that out. But it's uh, uh, learning the operation. So as we move to the franchising, where I'm gonna be part of this franchise team, helping these people open. It's me coming in and understanding what a day to day looks like. What our you know POS system looks like. What our membership system looks like. So I'm the one who can be you know the POC for all these guys, yeah. knowing all those systems. So being here day to day and learning all that stuff, learning how to run a bar, which you know I've never done before outside of just <laughs> drinking for free. So, yeah. <laughs> but then there's the unique challenges of the membership side. Yeah. So keeping track of that yeah. CRM, yeah. like com communication with your members, you know, promoting those events, but also like the not so fun parts where, you know, maybe somebody's card got declined and following up and receiving payment mm -hmm. on that end yeah. and not, you know, renewals and, you know, we've had diehard regulars who just like walk in like they own the place mm -hmm. because we all know them and they don't even think about it but they haven't been paying for a month mm -hmm. it's like you know just keeping track of all of that and you know what's been great about having trevor on the team is you know this is his business too and you know nobody cares more about your business right. than you do right. yeah so you mentioned earlier you've got three thousand memberships or so or you grew you it's, it's, quickly yeah it's, it's, a, it's around there um yeah, but, you know in our network we have over ten thousand now wow. um with our uh, followers on instagram we have over twenty six thousand so I, i'm sorry i so historically <laughs> oh, i think of, <laughs> i think of bars and restaurants <laughs> just get this uh, and again i know you know this because you you followed this model you got a bar restaurant Bar dash restaurant industry, but you've got subscribers. Yeah, you yeah. got you and got I an mean, ongoing. Obviously, I would yeah. guess the goal is to just have that that cover your expenses. Yeah, as much as we can. Yeah, booze and everything else is great. So there's over three thousand. Do you know them all? You don't know them. I mean, I yeah. pretend to sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you but money. you know the regulars, the ones that yeah, are yeah, most right. frequent. But obviously, there's others that are not necessarily coming in every day. No, we we really do know most of them. You know, be surprised, like you know, how many people you know and. Um, he was actually just at one of our regulars' wedding uh, the other day. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so we've really created a community, and you know, it's uh, it's been a lot of fun. It's been uh, exhausting on our end, but you know, what makes it worth all the headaches is you know seeing people happy enough to want to invite us to their wedding. I didn't get an invite, but that's cool. <laughs> um, no, it was a fun wedding. But same thing, like piggyback on that, like the events that we have, like your guys' events for trivia night, when you see like all these people just having fun, interacting, watching the, the relationships and the friendships that are formed from people hanging out here. Because you know, a lot of people, they move, they have a dog, they do stuff with their dogs, they're not friends yet, so they hear about us, so they come here, and then watching that person meet people and grow, like the organic interactions in this bar is unlike anything I've ever yeah. seen. Because you don't feel like you're being creepy going to talk to someone, or hey, I need an icebreaker to go talk to someone. You're like, hey, what's your dog's name? Yeah. And then right. you guys start talking, you see him come in again a week later, now you two are friends, you guys are going golfing on the weekend, and like watching those organic... The relationships. Yeah, relationships and friendships grow. And even like the dogs become friends, yeah. you know, which is really cool. Like, you know, we've had dogs come in here and you're like, oh no, this poor dog. Like, it's just insane because the person just has never had a dog before. And then with socializing here on a consistent basis, you know, you really see the turnaround and the dog really become normal and like enjoy itself. And, you know, seeing that and having, you know, we've had regulars and members, you know, thank us. They're like, you know, this place has just done wonders for me and my dog. And, you know, some people have, you know, met their significant others here. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of uh, first Tinder dates here, which have been <laughs> very entertaining for the staff's perspective. Uh, but no, it's, it's, been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. That's really cool. Okay, question. And I'm not a frequent. I'm not. I'm not necessarily probably your direct. Uh, I've still, I live in the suburbs, so yeah. I don't really get out much. I, I order DoorDash a lot. But Fair. Question. Fights. 
you deal with fights at a normal bar at least sometimes. We've had here, one. You had one. And it was barely a fight, and I also wasn't here for this. I miss all the fun <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I am very happy to be home now full time so I can see this. It was Super Bowl, the first Super Bowl we were open. It was the Bucks. So fight. the Bucks were in it, oh, and of yeah, course yeah. it's the COVID season. Like really, but we we had still to date our best day ever. We I had to bring in you know some of my furniture from my house <laughs> to sell more seating. Um, it was an absolute blast. We're having a great time. You know, it's the second half, and a Chiefs fan was sitting right next to a Bucks <laughs> fan, and they're friends. They came in together, but they're and, drinking, and they're drinking, and the Chiefs fan slaps the Bucks fan uh. <laughs> across the face, right in front of me. <laughs> And I'm like, what is happening? And then they got into like a slap boxing match. <laughs> the one guy That's fell awkward. over and then he just said, Wah! and then he walked out. And I was like, what just happened? Like, is everybody okay? And they're like, it's fine. He's just upset about the game. It's whatever. He actually texted them like 15 minutes later. He's like, hey, I'm really sorry I did that. <laughs> so that's been the only, the only fight. The person only fight. Real, like, like we're, yeah. You've yeah. had a couple awkward couple arguments that they're a little bit too loud to Those be sitting at a Those bar. Hard, yeah. But other than that, there's no physical altercations, okay. nothing. No police, no, no, no. The pretty boys yeah. take over. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Josh. Appreciate that. Yeah. And yes, pretty is a good definition for it. Keep that nose out of my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> we need a white we had <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no fights everyone's happy it's hard to not be in a good mood when you come in and you're just seeing all these oh, little psychos so run around it's the, crazy. it's the environment too like we close at 11 right except for post pub after dark but <laughs> <laughs> no it's it's we don't want that crowd and we have a zero tolerance for you know i've i've seen you know uh whether intoxicated or not anytime a you know, customer is disrespectful to one of our staff. That's it. That it's not like a warning. It's like get out. Like there, we have zero tolerance for that. You know, I had one guy put another person's dog in our basketball Papa shot machine. I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah, that's he's like, oh, it's yeah. like, no, you're out. Yeah. You've had a little too much to do. Yeah. yeah. So it's luckily, you know, doesn't really happen often. Um, on the dog end of things, you know, they are still animals. Things still happen. Sure. But we are trained through Revolution Dog Training. We know how to handle it. We have uh, like a blow horn. So that's something that dog uh, doggy daycares use. Mm, Anytime there's any like a scuffle, we, you just kind of hit it they and they'll let go. It must, it must yeah. 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 Rangers. Where they had to use yeah. them. They call yeah. them rangers. Rangers. Park rangers. Park rangers. Yeah. Park rangers. Park rangers, yeah. Have, We're here, it's like as soon as it starts, there's people pulling them apart right away, so. But what you said is very important is the preventative measures. You know, and I've never been to a month, so I can't speak to how they operate. But I've been to other dog bars, and I'm not going to trash them on this pod. But they are not paying attention. They're not mm -hmm. looking for the signs. They're waiting, they're waiting, they're waiting to react, to not yeah. be proactive. Yeah. So if we train our staff to be proactive. Hey, I see this dog is targeting this other dog. Or, hey, this shepherd, they're traditionally... They like to pounce oh, on yeah. little dogs. Oh, yeah, where'd so, he go? <laughs> yeah, he's, he's got a German Shepherd, and she gets kicked out everywhere. Well, they, everywhere. if they see a little wiener dog, they're going to be like, oh, I, that's a toy. Yeah. And they're not trying to be vicious or anything, but we need to see that before it actually happens. Right. Yeah. So that's the big thing um, that we strive to be in front of. <laughs> Would you mind, uh, how can people find you on social media? And then give a quick shout out to both your locations real quick. Puzz Pub Tampa, Puzz Pub Orlando, at Puzz Pub Tampa, at Puzz Pub Orlando. We also have our website, uh, puzzpub.com. Um, if you are interested in learning more about the franchise, you can apply right online. We have a franchising page. Um, but we have pictures online. I think the best representation of Puzz Pub is going on our social media, Instagram, our TikTok, and uh, get a feel for you know some of our events. Go to the videos, our birthday videos. Um, all of our events. Bonnie's excited about Bonnie's it. Just, <laughs> you can follow. You can follow we Bonnie. Have the camera down there at Bonnie Bonnie. Running Wild. Even better, come visit. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Awesome. Thank you guys. Hashtag right, take, your <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> take your dog to pee pee. Hashtag take your dog to pee pee. Awesome. Love it. Right, appreciate it. Cheers, guys. Appreciate it. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Bubs bub. Bubs bub. And to franchise. Let's go. Congratulations, fellas. Thank you. That's awesome. I'm excited for you. Thank you.